Before we start this video, a large thank you to Christopher and Gustavo for their support this week on Patreon. It is greatly appreciated, gentlemen, and I hope you enjoy the video. And a massive thank you to Halo Burner for their continued support to the channel this month on Patreon. It is greatly appreciated, my friend. You are a legend, and I hope you enjoy the video. Hello, everybody. Today's topic is poise, and I'm sure a lot of you know what poise is and how it works, but for those who don't, what is poise? Put simply, poise is a value that determines your resistance to being stunned upon taking damage. So if an attack strikes you and brings your poise value to zero, then you will become stunned upon taking damage. If it does not bring your poise value to zero, then instead you will play a flinch, where you're still free to attack, roll away, or even move. Now here's an example in our project Nephilim. I have no armor on, and as you can see, as the undead attacks me, it stuns me, and I'm unable to roll away or attack or do anything. Now here's an example where I am wearing armor, and my poise value is higher than the poise that's being taken from me upon the strike hitting me, and as you can see, I flinch instead, and I'm still able to run around and to basically attack if I want to and to get away. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is go to our character stats manager, and luckily we've already got a lot of this done, or at least some of it. Um, so we're going to make a header here, we're going to call this poise, because every character in your game is going to have poise. I mean, unless you don't want them to, in which case you can only put this in the player if you want, or the AI. But we're going to have a public float first for total poise damage. And this is the damage you've basically taken in the last few attacks, and this will reset after a timer goes back to zero. So basically this is going to factor into how much poise we have remaining. Uh, and then we are going to go right below that now and make another variable for offensive poise bonus. This will come into play later, but basically when you swing some weapons, you get uh, an additional amount of poise. Usually it's with heavier weapons like great swords or ultra great weapons, and this gives you a little bit of poise while you're in the swing. And this always resets after the swing is over, so you can reset that on your animated reset bull when it goes back to the empty state. Um, so this can just give you some temporarily uh, some more poise basically really noticeable in Dark Souls 3 when you're swinging great weapons The poise there isn't as strong as uh, poise in any of the other Souls games So then we got public float base poise defense uh, And I am going to be making the poise system similar to Elden Ring by the way or like Elden Ring not like Dark Souls 3 So this poise is gained from your armor or talismans or whatever any kind of bonus This is basically what you just have resting uh, from all your equipment, etc, etc and then we have the default poise reset timer. Um, I think in Elden Ring is something crazy, like 15 seconds. I could be wrong. Uh, I thought I remember hearing that in a video. I don't remember now for sure, though. But basically, this is how long before you have to not get hit for your poise to reset. So if your poise uh, breaks below zero, you have to wait this time before it goes back to its maximum value where you could tank another hit or two. I'm going to say it's eight. Uh, eight seems pretty reasonable. In Nephilim, I have it a lot lower. I actually like it lower because it makes tanky armor feel like it's more weighted and it makes more sense to use. Uh, otherwise, it just kind of doesn't feel that impactful to me. So then we got the poise reset timer. Um, and this is just what the timer is currently at. So if it's ever above zero, um, it's going to count down. And when it hits zero, it's going to reset your total poise and take away all the damage you've taken. So every time you get damage, it's going to make that timer go back up to the top. So it's not going to count down to zero. Uh, so you want to have a amount of time where you're not damaged. Now on the take damage effect, you can see here we have a comment that we made earlier called, uh, or it says calculate poise damage to determine if the character will be stunned. So we can do that right now. We're going to say character dot character stats manager dot total poise damage minus equals poise damage. Okay. Now right below that, we are going to do a couple more, uh, minor calculations here. I'm, I'm just going to comment all this out too, so it's very clear. So we are just going to subtract the poise damage uh, from the character total. And then right below here, I'm going to say float remaining poise. And we're going to get that by combining the character, character stats manager. Uh, we're going to get our base poise. So this is all from your armor and like I said, your talents and whatnot. And then we're going to add the offensive poise. So they might be in the middle of an attack. They could have some offensive poise here too from swinging a heavy weapon. And then we add in the total poise damage uh, because that will subtract basically because it's a negative value, right? So then we're going to see here if we're poise broken, we're just going to simply say if remaining poise is less than or equal to zero, then we know we are poise broken. So poise is broken is equal to true. And that's it, guys. We also want to reset the timer here on them if they have been damaged. So... We want to set the timer to its max value by saying character dot character stats manager dot poise reset timer is equal to character dot character stats manager default poise reset time. Super simple system and it's super cool. It uh, it adds a lot to the game. It's a cool mechanic being able to just tank a hit or two uh, in situations and it really gives a lot more value to heavy armor. 
So since the character has been hit, we reset the poise timer. I'll put a comment here too, just so that's very clear. Um, next, we're going to go down to play directional based damage animation. We can remove this here. We can we have a comment here to do calculate if we are poise broken. So we could just play the animation if we're poise broken, and that would be enough. Um, but Souls games and uh, uh, games who have a bit more polish will often play little flinch animations when you're not stunned, just so there's still some response. So we're going to do that. But before we go to that, let's jump over to the character stats manager and let's make a uh, protected virtual void here for handle poise timer. Handle poise reset timer. And we're going to say if the poise reset timer is greater than zero, poise reset timer minus equals time by delta time. So just go down by, you know, like one a second. Um, otherwise, if we're at zero, then we're just going to say our total poise damage is equal to zero. So we just reset all the damage we've taken. There we go. And let's make an update function here now. Uh, let's make it virtual in case you want to override it in the future. And let's just call this here. Now, if you wanted to, you could call it in the same place we call regenerate stamina. If you want to keep it all in one place, it's entirely up to you. It doesn't really matter as long as you know where it all is. I think we call regenerate stamina on the character manager. I could be mistaken, so you might want to call this here as well. Um, but for now, I'm just going to keep it right there. So this looks good. Uh, now, if I go into the game here and I go down to my, my character and I jack up their poise here. So let's go and put the base poise up to say... We'll say like 50 or something, because I think the, uh, we'll say 80 just to be safe. The, the zombies attacked us 25, I believe. So if he hits me now, you're going to see I will take damage as normal, but you can see I'm free to move around and I don't play a damage animation. So there I can just like walk away if I want to. Uh, now, when it gets below that threshold, you can see now I'm stunned. So the total poise damage is 105. You can see every time I'm hit, that timer is being reset again to 8 seconds. So we need to actually walk away. So I'll, I'll get away and I'll let it go to zero. You watch my total poise damage will go back to zero. And now we're free to tank a hit again without being stunned. And that's basically how the poise system works. So you're going to change that total poise value uh, based on what armor you're equipping and whatnot. But there's more we can do. Like I said, let's go to the animations now. Let's add a new layer. I'm going to call it ping damage override. And I'm going to put it below. This is important, our action override, because it's going to play on top of it like a layer. Now, we don't want this to mess up our attack animations. Uh, so we only want to mask the head and the chest so it's still noticeable and some people hate this in souls i think they refer to it as aim punch because it can kind of change the direction of your swing even though you're not technically stunned uh, but i think it's a cool effect and i think it makes sense but some people really don't like it so it's up to you if you want to include this i'm going to call this mask head and upper body uh, maybe head and chest actually is a better name because upper body would kind of include the arms so yeah we'll change that to head and chest and what you want is the chest uh, and the head and just disable the hands and the arms here. Unless you want that in too, it's entirely up to you, of course, it's your game. Um, and I'm going to set the weight to like 0 0.84 and I'm just going to set this mask to head and chest. Now this is super simple because we can actually just use the other animations we've already had in the past. So I'm just going to make an empty state here called ping damage empty and that's the default state. I'm going to copy all of the damage animations we have here um, from action override and paste them right here. And then we just uh, bring them back down to this transition here for ping empty. Uh, and basically, it's going to play the same animation here, um, but it's only going to play it on the head and the chest. And since it's not fully masked, it's at like 84%, you're going to get like a flinching look where it's not fully taking over the head and the chest of your character. And it's going to blend with whatever else you're doing. So if you're doing an attack, it'll blend with that. If you're running around, it'll blend with that. So now under play directional based damage animation, we can say... Uh, if poise is broken, and we open up some curly brazers here, and we would put our normal uh, function here, then we can say else. So our normal functionality is all this stuff right here. This doesn't change. We check for our angle. We play a damage animation based on the angle. All good. That's awesome. Now for the flinching, um, we do the exact same thing, but instead of doing it from the lists of normal damage animations, um, we're going to do it from the list of pings is what we're going to call it. Now these don't exist yet, so I'm also going to erase this if his poise broken down here for now. We're going to modify that in a second. Uh, so I'm going to rename all these mediums to ping. And like I said, this doesn't exist yet. It's so nowhere we're going to make it. Uh, so ping, forward, backward, left, and right. And now we can jump over to the character animator manager. I believe that's it. Uh, we could say if is poise broken, we're going to play the animation, but we're going to set is performing action to true implied that we're stunned. So if we are poise broken, play the selected damage animation. And yes, we are stunned. If we're not poise broken, play the damage animation, and then no, we're not interacting because we are not stunned and we're free to do whatever. Um, okay, so let's go jump over to the character animator manager here, and then we're going to add in these lists and these new animations. 
So we can copy everything we have here now because it's the exact same thing if you're having all your naming conventions consistent. And uh, we can just change the word medium in all these variables to ping. Uh, and also the animation names, if you did it that way too, like me, all you gotta do is change everything that says medium to ping. So just to keep this neater, I'm gonna make some comments above here too, some clear separators. That green is a nice uh, visual cue that it's different. It makes the, the variables not blend together. And I'm going to say ping hit reactions and then medium hit reactions. And I'm going to change every keyword here from medium to ping. Won't make you watch all that, don't worry. And then go down to start. And we're gonna copy all the start variables here where we assign these to our lists. I'm gonna do the exact same thing down here. And again, I won't make you watch all this, but we're gonna change medium to ping. And if you set it up just like that, it will work um, just like that because they're just, the animations is gonna all function the same way. We're just adding a new set of lists and a new set of animations to those lists. All right, cool, looks good. We're gonna save that now and let's jump back over to the take damage effect because I forgot to actually allow rotation and movements. Put a comma here where we're not stunned. You can see, want to say false for uh, apply to motion. We don't want that. We want to say true for enable can rotate and true for enable can move. And this will allow us to actually move and rotate. So just to make this super clear too, I am going to place a comment here that just basically says uh, that if we are poise broken, we want to restrict any movement and any action. So we're stunned put it simply. Um, and if we're not poise broken, we want to allow movement and actions. So we are not stunned. So I would say if we are not poise broken, we want to simply play a flinch or just play an animation, whatever you want to call it, without restricting any actions or movement. All right, let's save that. And that looks good. I'm going to say play an upper body animation because that is important. Also, now if I go into the project here now, and I let this gentleman hit me, so we are stunned. You can see that I cannot move because I'm poise broken. So I'm going to quickly edit my poise values here now. Let's go down to the player variable. Going to go to the base poise value here. And we're going to set this to, we'll say, uh, 500. So I'm definitely not being poise broken. Now watch. I'm going to get hit. And you can see here I'm able to run away after getting hit. But you can see the flinch animation still plays. So it adds a reaction to the game. You know you want that because it's just... it. You can see that you've, you've been hit, and it looks a lot cooler. It's a bit of polish, in my opinion. It looks a lot nicer than playing nothing at all. Well, there you go, guys. You have a functioning poise system. Now when we add our armor system, we can kind of have much more use out of this because right now there's no way to modify your poise. So I think we'll get into some basic equipment systems and stuff like that soon. Uh, thank you very much again for joining me this weekend. I hope you guys learned something today. I hope you all enjoyed the video. And as always, a special thank you to my patrons. It is genuinely because of all of you. The series can continue, so I appreciate each and every one of you. I'll see you guys next week.